All right, welcome. This, is, uh, this talks about an, uh, an old module that uh, I'm, is now my, I'm the maintainer of now, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's a classic. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's about 10 years old. Um, it's got, I mean, I mean, that says a lot by itself. Just today it has 555 sites that were using it, but if you don't remember, it's just a Drush module, most of it, so people have been using it on Drush. I remember Pantheon used it on like all the sites. So anyway, um, there's a lot of teams that worked on it over the years, Pantheon is initial development, and just for some background, right, 1.x is still where we're at, just triple seven, it was like, you know, helpful, but uh, a lot of information. The second version came along for Drupal 8. Took, took like a couple of years, but still Drush, uh, still what it is, and that's that's fine. You can output that and save it. And then eventually 3 came along, and they finally had a web interface. So we finally had this, but also this, where we could uh, look at it. And that was about it, though. Um, it gave you this really nice looking thing if you had the bootstrap theme. <laughs> uh, it, wasn't, it did its job, and so it's not like something everybody clicks all the time. So it, it just kind of was one of the modules that just sat around for a while, did what it did, and it was good, and some people used it. Um, but all of that is just static. So you run the command, it processes your site, and then it's, it prints it out right then and there, and that's all it, did, all it did. So, you know, if you had your system set up and you ran cron and saved it and you ran other scripts to email it, that's great. But it was helpful. You go to the status page, you click, you know, audit and you can see what's wrong um, but again you'll you know someone will call you that your site's down before you and then you go check it later so what we wanted to do with uh, that Vardot on ThinkDrop um, they hired Vardot hired me to help me build some stuff and so they like this module they built a bunch, a bunch of extensions to it as well checks like SEO and all sorts of other things um, but it was like we have a hundred websites we're supporting we need to keep track of them so I want to make a dashboard, boss said, and I said, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. We've made a bunch of those. Let's make a new one. And we were trying to figure out what's the best way to really like talk to these things, have these sites talk to each other. And it just occurred to me like this old site audit module would be pretty work pretty well. So, and it really was. It didn't take very long, but I turned it into an entity. So now you can save site audit reports just like a node. You hit save, save add report, and it renders it in a data dump and saves it in there. So you can have timestamps and authors and uh, even the saves the site title and the UUID. So you can have a whole database of reports and see like where they came from. So you can have reports on this live site, you can have reports on the dev site and see like what URLs actually it was running on what site it actually was, and I put the UUID in there because then everything can change, and it doesn't matter. I still know, hey, this is the same site, even though it's a copy from here or here or here. All right, so once you start thinking about running it in different environments, like tests, it's, it's, it becomes really pretty interesting. All right. Um, and once we had that ability, we could do things like add recurring saving. So it's very easy to just cron job now. You just save one set of setting, and it'll save a report every minute, month, hour, whatever. It also, this is coming up later, but you can send a report now as well. And this, that's why we wanted one site to track all the others. Um, and that's simple setting. Drupal 8, 9, 10 is so easy. You just type Drush Generate and hit it, and there it is. So I was like, Drush Generate Entity, Site Audit Report is done. Drush Generate REST Endpoint, done. This is simple, out of the box Drupal stuff. You put this URL in there, you get a key, and it will start sending those reports to this other, to another Drupal site, <laughs> and just saving the entities over there. And so we made a site audit server module that basically can receive the, the reports and store them in the same place it's reporting itself. So in one place, you could have all these URIs and all the site titles and all the data from all of that stuff. And that's like having all of these all the checks. So I didn't have any more slides because I could just jump, dive in and look at these checks and things. But um, yeah, has anyone used site audit module? Love it. Classic. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's not a new module. I'm updating it. So uh, 
let's just like look at it. <laughs> you know? I have so many questions. <laughs> Keep, shoot, shoot them. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it's got the old thing in there still. <laughs> you know, oh, fast forward four is great. Yeah, not able to, you know, lots and lots of recommendations. Yeah, this is good because I need to go off slides because there's a lot to talk about now that we have more capabilities, right? Because not everything here is like a big deal. <laughs> so site audit just kind of put, spits out a percentage point and a kind of arbitrary like are you good or bad value and it's kind of it can be overwhelming because it's like not always does it matter yeah you want your caches in there but there's so much information in here that it's it's hard sometimes to even dig in and pull out what you really care about you know um, like how many blocks I have and stuff but it's getting this is kind of buried into it so we uh, this is like a call for community as well because right now it's just taking a data dump of whatever it was rendering and so some of it's machine readable but some of it's not like i have a report here let's go back to the nice looking page um yeah so you see the main page and then there's uh the saved reports page now All right and so you can just click on the individual report and now see a little bit better just traditional field set system and now for example cron that saves it when it ran it. So it actually saves the three seconds ago uh, as a string. And so we're like, got to make a bunch of tweaks to these classes, but it's actually really simple classes uh, for all of these different checks. Um, Can you make the screen bigger? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like this is just a dump of the Drupal status page. But, you know, pretty useful. You want to see like the version and whether it's old or not. And so, we need to come up with a better way to like pull it out and so I was, what I'm really thinking about is making like an audit facts system where it's like you would just you could just save an arbitrary thing that says like up to date yes or no or count users and then because this is in views now so you can make a view but you can't access these individual properties because it's just all dumped into one one thing so I'm just talking about like the future but yeah like we need to pull out very specific problem items that sh show like red flag or not, instead of just a general, you know. So that 86% is stored as a field and that can be parsed by It is actually, yeah. So you could do longevity over time to show that you're making incremental improvements? Yes. Oh. Okay. So it's, it's just, uh, it's in here somewhere under data, yeah. So it took whatever it was rendering before, it's not, each thing is slightly different. So yeah, it does actually store the percent. Excellent. Right, but that's actually good, right? Because yeah, yeah, that way you can look. Yeah, and so right now, because this is not like normalized or whatever, you can't, like, it would take work to kind of pull that out. But if there was a sep another thing attached to reports that was just like a fact, then you would have like ca uh, cache 100, cache 100, cache 200 over time with a timestamp, and it's just another Drupal entity, and it kind of yeah. becomes like a storage for whatever you might want to look at. Uh, the other option, uh, you wouldn't be able to dump the whole report out into like a JSON file. Well, that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they did already. They did that 10 years ago. Yeah, it's basically yeah. render as JSON or render as HTML. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I did is, is I took the J render as JSON and I just saved it. Yep. So I'm really not even doing anything fancy. This is already done. This data structure was already there. Okay. It just was rendering into the theme function and then that was it. So now it's saving that just as a dump in that one field. Mm -hmm. um, and but I was already so now that there's an entity, I have all these hooks, and so for our dashboard, we were able to hook into the audit being saved and actually like do things. So we had a field like in a, fill in a field, for example. Um, zoom too big, and yeah, it's frozen. <laughs> uh, so like I added a field to the site audit report itself that referenced something else. And so it could be anything, but we created a site node actually. And so we could have other things and link that up to other stuff. And so every time a site report comes in, it looks at the URL and it does stuff, All right? Um, I'm gonna open up another thing here. Uh, one of the neat things it does also is it's like a, it, it receives data back and forth Right, so we have a custom module that has an event, I believe. Uh, it's not this one. 
There's an event for receiving a report. Yeah, no, it's, I, this isn't actually what I want to show. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go into the. There we go. Okay, that's working now. <clears throat> so I have to talk this through. I actually drew it up on paper. I didn't get a chance to put it in the slide. The client site sends the remote, the whole audit to the remote, right? There is now a hook to like alter that payload actually, so you can send whatever you want from a custom module. Say, hey, site, uh, this thing's not working or whatever. You can just do it site audit class too, but if you want to alter that payload or whatever. So when, then when the server receives it, let me try to open it up. That's, that's an event as well. So the custom module on your server can receive the report and react to that to do stuff on top of the entity things. But then there's an alter hook for what you send back. And that's what's interesting is so the client site can say send report and that first time it gets back it's okay or 200 or, or an error. You can have the main site receive the audit and say yes or no and actually pass the string back and forth. And so that's what we were doing with, with the, the dashboard thing. Uh, the support dashboard is there's a support widget on the top and we're actually going to send back if their license is supported or not. You know, so Acquia does it, all sorts of other things do it uh, on the long browser. Uh, <clears throat> oh, so it's not even the cell module. It's, uh, so it's I made it this server separate, so I can just so you don't every site doesn't have the server in it. Nice. Um, I should, should have started with the site audit itself, classes and stuff, so you can get familiar. Yeah, let's go there. So it's really easy to just add arbitrary checks to your site. So like if there's this one corner of your app that always goes down for some reason, you could just drop a plugin uh, into Drupal 8. And if you're familiar with that, it's just to create this class, and it's called a check or a checklist. And you can just run any arbitrary PHP to say pass or fail. So like this is just doing the size of the files, content fields, counting your fields. Um, but it's neat because you can even like return like a display of some kind, like it's theme code, so that the audit report has whatever you want in it. You know, if you want to render a view or something, you could put it in there uh, to print out to send to some boss or whatever. Uh, and so yeah, you can even do the warnings and things like that. So uh, one of the little changes we made is like you had to check checks. These are called checks and. It used to be called a report, but now that we're saving reports, I changed it to call it, be called a checklist. So like a checklist doesn't do much, but it's just a category, but um, you can extend these to say like add a checklist and then only run that checklist to say these are my most required things. Um, So like we just released a public module that what we can put into like every single site, even public Drupal sites going in the the uh, <clears throat> and so they we I mean they just wrote a ton of other ch additional checks that we can all share, right? So alternative caches and then commerce stuff. You know, like devil or DB log, like so much stuff. If the Google Analytics is working, uh, there's already like security. There's a security review module. Uh, this integrates with the checklist as well, so it provides a checklist to site audit. Um, so the forex branch is still compatible with all the modules that extend. I just changed the class name, so oh, okay. like we could leave. I don't know. I guess we could leave it there. But I actually posted a little issue, and I was asking like, it's it's a quick fix. Like, and I would even want there's like Drupal Rector and other tools that'll upgrade. Okay. So I, I would provide like a little. I didn't even do it. Make, I can submit pull requests now easily. So I would go ahead and do that. And it's just because like a report is just this was just like a group of checks. It had no other functionality whatsoever. And so 
from like just an information architecture perspective, calling the saved entity a report just felt right. You know, you're making a report, a report, a report. So, the, like, there was no other functionality of the of the checklist as other than being a list of checks. <laughs> so, um, but again, it's just a class change um, from site audit report based to checklist based. So, I, I want to help. Like, we're going to be using all of them. So, <laughs> I'll probably be the one to just go ahead and. To flip the switch. But again, they're actually all very simple, so most of these modules, they don't go through a bunch of changes over time, right? They build their little tests and they leave it, so. Um, yeah, I know it's kind of like jumping all over, but that's kind of how the module works, you know? Things are, uh, other things that'd be cool if we change the checklist thing is we can make checklist an entity even, because I want to know, I want to see, make a thing called like a requirements list, where if these five checks don't pass, like you fail CI or whatever, right? So that's kind of an arbitrary thing sometimes as well, because there's just a lot of, we'll look at more checks if you want. Um, anybody else want to like, questions? We need to do an interactive session here, because it's not a long, yeah. Can you show that dashboard you're talking about? Yeah, I was just pulling it up actually here. Uh, yeah, I mean, so it's just like a list of customers. We've all maybe done it before. And so it's got the site audit list built in. Oh, this is this site. If I go to save reports, it's receiving them from different, even PR sites and other, other customer sites. But it's interesting, you can catch things like Drush is not configured for the UI if default. You know, so that's not that's pain pain for people to constantly being set, and you don't know where the site's being calling Drush from. So you can add a check that says this is not default or, or this or that. Um, and it's interesting too; you can see the site titles change over time as well. Um, and this this is all the free open source stuff. And so, but what's interesting here is these are extra fields we added, right? And so the report. Uh, it doesn't. This it doesn't do this by itself actually now, but it just stores all the reports. But we added a field to associate the report with another uh, thing called a site, so that we can have multiple sites and list the reports just from them. So this is the standard view, right? Where we made where we're filtering only the reports for this site. Okay, so we've got a list of sites, and they all get. Uh, yeah. And so I can even, I had one earlier where I was like, oh yeah, this is from a PR, so my bad. So yeah, you can see how the URL changed because it's like we clone that site, so it's still pinging to the same server and cron's still running. So it's actually a good, good thing, interesting thing to see. Like this could be used to audit a developer's work, for example. Like put the site audit to check in there that they didn't turn something on wrong or whatever. Uh, yeah. So, but like I said, there's there's a lot, and some of them are like, oh, it uses. You know, check every single view that's not query catched. Oh no, <laughs> you know. So I, I would, I think this is kind of a foundation to implement some like be real best practices kind of checks for people. You know, because it is kind of broad right now. Um, but I really want to have like use this for CI stuff too. Where, like you have to pass this if you're gonna. But yeah. Have you considered doing what we saw percentages? Again, it's like a design feature, right? I don't know. It came. It was like this when I got here, but uh, I think that's what you'll be able to. And now that the data is kind of in there, you can kind of play with it and do different things. But I kind of agree. A percentage is really kind of misleading. Yeah. I'd rather just see a count, like 15 out of 16 pass or something. Um, but then again, yeah, this is. Some has to be the threshold, though. Right. So like, yeah, but maybe it is a percentage. Well, yeah. Oh, actually, that's the thing I added on the right, so you can see kind of a, oh, okay. how many warnings. So. But again, yeah, we need some design help on this for sure. I was going to suggest what being able to dip between two and four. Bingo. See, I was almost tempted to say, what if we save each one as a revision? Because then we instantly we built in, you have the diff viewer and Drupal because yeah. they're entities. So, yeah, that's that would be totally almost possible because it's still just a it's a JSON dump right now. Yeah. 
so it's still a little tricky. But help, you know, going in and it's easy to click edit on contrib modules now and merge stuff. There's even like built in IDEs on Drupal.org now. You don't even have to clone it or any of that stuff. So if you're not on Drupal.org yet and you think you will, just check it out. Uh, if you go to the project page, we can show you right now, actually. Why not? Well, like, before you leave that page, um, because yeah. there wasn't a lot of hands that went up about people that are actively using this, yeah. uh, I, one thing I always point out to clients that are questionable whether or not we introduce this to a project, um, I'll be like, if you're ever doing like a major replatform, it's always good to know the content on your site. So you were showing like the block list and the number of times used, and yeah. then you see like your entity types, how many times they're used. So if there's like one or zero, you're just like, do not write a migration for this. Or yeah, definitely to useful. Content type. And yeah. then write it down even per field. If you're not using a field or a low number, and it's got the weight of needing a custom or contrib module attached to it, and that's the only place you're using it, that gives you an opportunity to like thin the site down before you jump into the migration. Yeah, that's all great for the recording. Uh, <laughs> say, he, he was saying it, how this is very useful when you're like, upgrading a site or moving from one way to the other because you can tell what, what what's in there. Um, but yeah, like for example, duplicate titles, it actually does scan and see if you have any duplicate titles, you know, against all nodes. So however useful that can be. Um, but again, these are all simple classes. So once you get the module, you can kind of open them up and, and copy and paste most of them. You don't have to be an advanced programmer or anything uh, to do that. Uh, yeah. What about like different uh, environments for the same website? Are those just different websites and that's all? It would, you could tell that by the URL. So the UID is the same, <laughs> but hopefully if you're running Drush with the URI attached or whatever, you're getting you can the URI uh, the URLs change. So that I thought I had a I'm working out some bugs. Oh yeah, wrong tab. <laughs> uh, this one has. Yeah, so these are actually clones of each other, right? But they're coming from different URLs. So um, that's part of what we're thinking about too, is like I want to be able to pass an environment variable or something in there and like, uh, yeah. But for now, the main um, fields we have, we store are the UUID and the URI and a label. Um, and, but, Again, coming up with an interesting way to add other fields like that, like environment type or string or, you know, something we can do now with fields, but uh, because there's so much data you want to play with, I'm trying to come up with an interesting way to say, to make like the very, like in this view, allow me to add like an exact, you know, thing from one of the checks. Uh, but. Yeah, that's like data science questions, like yeah. MongoDB stuff. <laughs> no SQL. Group that by customer. Yeah, yeah. Show that to everyone. So exactly, yeah. So yeah, but right now it works well to just—it's an entity hook to just hook any of this insert field there, and it's really uh, Drupal eight is actually pretty easy to do that too. Uh, let's see, I think it's in this one. Yeah, so it's just an entity pre-save. Uh, looks up another report if it already exists. So it matches up against the site that already has this reference field. Um, and yeah, Drupal 8, if you're ever caught in the field thing and you're like, oh, I have to worry about the, is it zero or one? Or, you can just reach, reach the properties now. It's really easy to just save this stuff. Just call that and uh, saves a message. So, fun to play with. Um, what does this one do? That's just the helper functions and stuff, so. <clears throat> yeah, any other questions? So, as um, like more of a project manager, not really a developer, like there's all these things we kind of like run our own. Comes out of the box with like so much information. Is there any? Yeah. Like, Actually, it's. Less than the full amount? You can, yes, you can. Um, one of the original settings is to only run some of them. Uh, but again, it's like, that's all cache. I want to, if you want to show something useful to like a, 
you know, stakeholders or something, yeah, you're going to want to kind of like piece these together. But an interesting thing is you, it, it sorry to like go back into code or whatever, but because it's so simple, you could piece together, make one custom checklist out of all the other checks and just like inherit classes and stuff. So it wouldn't be hard to kind of make a meta, make a meta uh, thing in code right now. But I keep thinking about how it would be awesome just to make that in a web interface anyway. We make no types, why not just say, hey, give me this report type. Yeah. And in this report type, it has these three. Seems like a yeah. recipe, <laughs> recipe with a bunch of Yeah, yeah. And at a certain point, if you don't need it custom, it should just be reusable across you know, a pretty wide swath of the it's already, this would be so easy, let's do it tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to be at the kind of true thing, but yeah, like there's already a site audit thing and a managed fields thing, so then it would just be site audit type, or report type, and then each that each one could say, hey, this is the cash one, this is the developer one, this is the the customer one. So it really wouldn't be... You mode for a single content type. That too, all that stuff, yeah. Well, at the report thing, I think the type, having a report type would be great, because then you would say, like, this type of report type is absolute requirements, and then you hit add, give me, create report, which type, you know, and then you save that. View modes is cool too, but it's a lot of data too. You know, really want, I mean, I want to store it off. Sometimes I do want to store a lot, like or get it up to date a lot rather. But I don't want to store a giant blob every time. Why would, so, you, why would you store as much data as possible, and then when you go because the site will live forever. <laughs> I don't disagree, but it's also, I deal with a lot of very large sites because they don't care about stuff like that. And they're like, oh, our watchdog table is too gigs, who cares? So in terms of sites that are designed to kind of live forever, right? So it's up to you. It's easily configurable. We'll send it every minute. But if we had a, sometimes you, like, you want to check if the site's actually online every minute, but you don't really care if the disk is full every 30, you know, five minutes or whatever. Or those things that only matter once an hour. So. If, if it was configurable like that, then you could say this check, run this check once a minute, run this check once a day. I guess it depends upon if you have a bunch of other monitoring tools and you're just looking at this one to watch right. configuration change, and maybe you assume your configuration change isn't going to be every minute. Right, right. Yeah, it's always yeah, it's, it's like a balance. A, it's like a one day, you know, once per day check or once per hour or something. Then you, it's not like you're going to have a yeah. big bloated tape. Well, yeah, an endless tape. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's any data, man. You're dealing with that with every other table. <laughs> you know, like, you can uh, you can back it up, you can clear it out. But, um, um, question. Yeah. So, uh, if you attach a little extra fields to those reports and you're sending them back to the server, uh, you know, uh, does that mean that um, you could add, like, a taxonomy field? Any that? field at all, yeah. And then it would be... Sense. It sends the whole entity over, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. So just, like, <laughs> That's what's cool about it. Yeah. Tag a few different, use taxonomy, mm -hmm. show up here. Okay. Even, uh, that type of area. <clears throat> yeah, it just sends everything. That's what's nice about the data. Drupal, it's already got serialized and it just sends the whole thing over. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, and I, like, I'll be at Contrib Days tomorrow and. Um, Online all the time, on the Slack and all that. Uh, and yeah, like, I mean, I can show you. It's really, really quite easy if you haven't been on Drupal.org a lot. Uh, the, all the stuff is there's links to the source code and things. But if, if you like find something wrong with it, and there's 90 open issues, by the way, if you feel like, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, so, for example, yeah, here. Can I rename this, please? Like, can I? <laughs> so I just described all of it, and, and then I just did it, and so it's in a fork already, and you can. It's already. Uh, I don't think. It, am I not logged in? Yeah. Yeah, like this one actually was fixed. But it's a good example. You can just what? click create issue fork. It's my worker. Hmm? It's my uh, coworker. Excellent. 
And, but, uh, yeah, and recent too, like 29 days ago. So people yeah. are still, this is, uh, but yeah, this actually, look at that. It creates a whole branch uh, and then you can fix it and click open merge requests and then we can all look at your code and stuff. Uh, and I think you click the, that branch, it goes to the repo. Yeah, so it even make, it makes a whole separate repo. It doesn't just make a branch. This is your own personal copy uh, of the module. And yeah, so you can really do whatever you whatever you want. Um, it's like I bet there's some README change I can make here. Uh, uh, but see here, Web IDE actually. That's what I wanted to show you. This is if you haven't seen this stuff, it's phenomenal. Look at that. Full on. Uh, Editor. Okay. So. so yeah, uh, join the uh, community. <laughs> I think that's real quick. Where's the, the main documentation? Uh, Drupal.org slash project slash site audit. I'm, I'm looking at that. I just didn't see the. Uh, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how much there really is. Again, like I just started maintaining myself, uh, but that's what this is actually good for. You can go to GitLab, so there's the homepage. They don't have a link to documentation. Oh, there's a link to this README. Yeah, um, I my question is kind of like, if, if I had a contrib module and I wanted to create a little test, where would I look to see where to do that? Yeah, that's, well, that's almost like a Drupal.org project question, but yeah. you have a contrib module already, you said? Yeah, just, just like so. If I want to just be like, hey, you only use this for migrate. You don't need to leave it enabled. Pop that report. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you mean like add a feature to the core yeah. module here? Yeah, it would all it would all be through this. You can I would create an issue first to to explain what you want to do. You can go to the uh, go to the page again. And here on the right, all issues. And yeah, there's not really a good, you have to go to open it first. It's, that's a good usability note. Uh, you clue in there, and then you can click create new issue. And even if it's feature requests, whatever. Um, Documentation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can actually add, control this. So I can even add documentation pages and things. Um, that would be great. Yeah, they give you a template here, even if it's a bug or whatever. But um, I would do that, and then where's that read me here? Here. Yeah. See, so there you go. <laughs> How to use pipe it to HTML file. So hopefully, yeah, now we don't have to do that anymore. Another feature I want to add is like email sending. So if you want to get some contrib points, come on in and help us send the email when we hit the button instead. It's all set up to do that. I just haven't had a chance to write the code. Uh, uh, yeah, that's my presentation. It's a shorty. And if nobody else has any questions, then we'll uh, give you time back. <laughs>